What's up everyone, I'm Twisted and this is the second part of my current theories on the next Legends of Runeterra Champions. In case you missed it, in the first part I discussed how many champions would be in this set and I also took a look at Riot's other games to see what champions were likely to join Legends of Runeterra. In this video, I'll analyze each region separately and discuss what champions might join based on gameplay, cards that were recently released and hints left by the devs. Then I'll also discuss how the narrative of the world of Runeterra might give us an idea of what to expect from the game. Before I start, I want to mention a few things, but if you want to skip to the actual discussion, feel free to do so. In my previous video, I mentioned champions whose voices were heard recently, and also champions present in Riot Forge games from 2023. But I completely forgot Morgana. She was not only present in the Mage Seeker game, but also voiced the Mage cinematics. Thank you to this user for reminding me. And while we are at it, Silas' voice was also present in one of the teasers for the Mage Seeker, so I also forgot about it. Fiddlesticks was recently teased to be joining Wild Rift soon. As always, we'll see ya on the rift. Hey, hey guys! I told you to keep the windows closed! So another one to the list of champions in that game that is not in Alawar yet. Moving on, let's quickly talk about exclusive champions. Riot has mentioned multiple times that this year we would be getting multiple LOR exclusive champions. So far we got two, but I think it's safe to assume that we'll be getting more. How many more? Well, so far both expansions had at least one exclusive champion. And if this trend continues, we can expect a total of four exclusive champions. In the past, we've gotten cards that teased upcoming champions, be it literally their champion spell, an artwork or flavor related to them, or by literally having them present in the artwork. Throughout this video, I'll mention cards that are currently in the game that might be teasing new champions. So I wanted to show these examples first for those that weren't aware of them. And now, finally, without further ado, let's get started. Of the 10 regions present in the game, 4 of them already got champions, so there's no point focusing on them. In the past sets, a region has only gotten multiple champions if one of them was a multi-region champion or released during an event. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm not expecting regions to get more than one champion. However, I do still want to talk about Bilgewater. If every region gets a new champion in this set, Bilgewater will remain as the region with the least amount of champions, since they only got one new champion during the Bendel City expansion, while all other regions got one new champion and one new multi-region champion. I don't think there'll be another mono Bilgewater champion in this set, but we might see a Bendel City Bilgewater champion joining the game. They already created an exclusive Yordle, so the next one will likely be one present in League. There are only 4 Yordles left, Amumu, Corki, Kled and Vex. Shurima is already one of the regions with the most champions, so Amumu joining maybe isn't happening so soon. From the 3 Yordles left, the only one I can see being a Bendel City Bilgewater champion is Corki, even if he is more closely associated with PNZ. The last Yordle we got was Mono Battle City. Does that make it more likely for the next one to not be Mono Battle City as well? I'm not sure, but either way, Corky could easily also be a Mono Battle City champion. As of right now, all Battle City champions are Yordles, or related to Yordles. This might change in the future. There aren't many Yordles left, and they already introduced an exclusive one, so I wouldn't be surprised to see other mischievous, whimsical or cute champions joining the region in the future, especially Ionian champions, since the region has the largest pool of champions. As I said, it's also possible that Vex could join the game. She could even be both the new Bendel City champion and the new Shadow Elves champion, though I'm gonna be optimistic and assume that all regions will get a mono region champion. There are only two champions left that could join the Shadow Elves, ignoring other spooky champions that aren't from the region. Last year, the Deathless keyword surfaced on the files alongside Brash. The latter was released in this set, so perhaps Deathless will too and Cartus seems to fit that word better than Yorick. Wright has also stated that units that transcend death are part of the Shadow Isles identity, and Cartus' passive in League fits this description. They also want to expand the mass murder capabilities of the region, and what better than Cartus' ultimate to wipe a whole board out. It's also possible that we might see an exclusive champion even if there are still two champions left, since that's exactly what happened with Bilgewater. In the last set, we did get the Hunted Tomb, which could be hinting at Ledrus becoming a champion. Both Commander Ledrus and Haunted Tomb fit the theme of Transcending Death. 
though Jack, the follower and Jack, the champion, have little in common gameplay-wise, so we can't really expect Ledrus, the champion, to be similar to Ledrus, the follower. Demacia has 4 champions left. The region's anti-spell identity is something that the devs want to embrace more, and out of these 4 champions, I think Silas is the most likely to embody this archetype. It's also possible for Demacia to get an exclusive champion, but I do think Silas has a lot going for him. Stick around, because I'll mention him again when I start talking about narrative. Just like Demacia, Freljord also has 4 champions left. Recently, the team behind LOR teased that some particularly catastrophic threats would come to the game. This is very vague and could be something like Volibear and the Yurstein, Olaf and Monsters, or even Nunu and Yetis. If I had to bet, Volibear would be the most likely to fit this description. And I'll mention him again in the next section. I think Nunu is also quite possible, since they are expanding the subtype archetype with Nico and all the new subtypes they added. As of right now, there isn't really a champion that synergizes with subtypes like Nico. Of all the followers from this subtype archetype, three of them are from Freljord, and from these, two of them don't even have a subtype, meaning to have, let's say, the Warden alongside Nico, your deck must be a Nico Freljord deck. Nunu and Willem would obviously at least have the Yeti subtype, so I think they could fit in very well with Nico or even have their own twist on the subtype archetype. Piltover and Zorn together have currently the largest champion pool out of all the regions, so I doubt we'll see an exclusive champion in this region so soon. And since there are currently 5 Piltovens and 4 Zonites in the game, or 3 if you don't count Timu, the next PNZ champion might just be a Zonite. The design of Cunning Kittens seems to be a hint toward Warwick, and recently we've gotten the Dog subtype, which would obviously fit him. There are no Targonian champions left from League. Even Kale was more of a Damascian champion. Just like her sister, Morgana could end up in this region. But I think the next Targonian champion will most likely be an exclusive one. But who could this be? Well, considering how unexpected both Nora and Jack were, it's anyone's guess. I had a whole section here about how Age of Dragons might be teasing a new champion, but I'll just leave it here on screen because, well, I saw the spell animation in-game and this is likely just a support card for Aurelion and the Dragon archetype. Moving on, I think Tiari the Traveler is a safe bet for the next exclusive champion, since Riot has spent some time developing her character. Of course, there's always the possibility of a Nishtal or Void champion being placed in Targon, it wouldn't be the first time. So far in this set, we've gotten 2 Runeterra champions, and as I said, I'm not expecting more than 3, so who could the third be? I think the most likely candidates for Runeterra champions are the ones from Ishtal, the ones related to the Void, and the ones related to Demons, as well as Nefiri, Brand and Shaco. Most Ishtal and Void champions can easily be put in Shurima or Tarn. We can see Milius Foemigus in the artwork of Anure and Froop, Rengar fits Nidalee's Cat and Ambush Kimmix well, and Kiana could also be the third Runeterra champion of this set. But, since we have already gotten two Ishtal champions, I'm not sure how likely we are to see more so soon. Nila will most likely end up in Bilgewater, because that's her region or universe. There are only two Bilgewater champions left, and they already created an exclusive one for the region. She's also very closely associated with water, so I think she fits the region very well. Nafiri is here because so far all the other Darkin are Runeterra champions, though she could easily be a Shuriman as well, but I think most people would be disappointed by that. As I mentioned in my previous video, Soul Fighter is this year's cross-game event, and Nafiri just so happens to be released in League during it. So far, champions have not released in Legends of Runeterra between less than a year of their League release unless they are released during some kind of event. Riot has released a post about a new event and they don't mention a new champion for LOR at all, despite mentioning Nila being a new champion for Wild Rift. So, if Nafiri is to be released in this set, it will not happen as part of this event. I don't have much to say about Fiddlesticks or Brand in this section and, well, Shaco has no actual lore, so I won't be mentioning him at all. From all of these champions, only 4 are in Wild Rift, with Nila and Cassidy being the most recent, and Fiddlesticks is joining in the near future. 
If any of the remaining champions are released in LOR, they might join Wild Rift shortly after. If you are enjoying this video so far, consider subscribing to my channel. This year, I'm trying to reach the minimum requirements for monetization. So, if you subscribe, you're helping me out a lot. Thank you, and let's get back to the theories. In the last few years, the teams at Riot have worked on the narrative of multiple projects at the same time. Here are a few examples. Dr. Mundo, Renata, Zeri and Neon, some universe stories released alongside LOR expansions, Silas was being worked on slightly before the Mage Seeker started being made, and some of the concept art for the game was also used for Legends of Runeterra. Recently, we've seen the teams work on Ishtal with Milio, Nidalee, Nico, and Skarner. Nafiri was most likely worked on around the same time as the Darkin Saga, since both she and Zolani are mentioned in Varu's new voiceover in Leak, and at least Nafiri is mentioned in a note in the Mage Seeker. One of Nafiri's teasers is seen from the perspective of Keisante, likely because Riot started working on both around the same time. In the first sets of Legends of Runeterra, the narrative of each champion didn't really tie or cross with other champions. There are some exceptions, like Nasus and Renekton fighting, but most were very self-contained. However, last year's set was quite different. It included a narrative that connected multiple champions and progressed with each new expansion. Six out of the 18 champions of the last set were part of the Darkin Saga narrative. That's a third of the champions. In this set, they are doing something similar. Each expansion comes with its own small narrative. In Glory in Avori, Jack and Samira travel to Set's fighting pit in Ionia, and in Heart of the Huntress, Nidalee and Nico fight Piltoven poaches together. The Poro King's cards are the only ones with a self-contained narrative, but for a good reason, he only exists in Ingvar's imagination. I think it's safe to assume that some of the next champions will be tied together in terms of narrative and gameplay. Set and Samira sharing a narrative was quite unexpected, but using Set's father as the link between the two was really smart. So, what other champions could share narratives? Nilus released in 2022 expanded the lore of demons in a significant way, lore which was recently slightly expanded with a note in the Convergence game. This note references a new primordial demon. Since the note describes the demon as a shut-in with depression, and one of the upcoming League champions is described as broody and somber, people are speculating that there is a connection between the two. And I think they are right. As I mentioned, the Mage Seeker had a note referencing Nafiri. So the Convergence having a note referencing an upcoming League champion isn't far-fetched at all. Ruin King also had a teaser for Gwen, but unfortunately the game was delayed and Gwen was released before the game itself. Riot Reeve, lead gameplay producer for League of Legends, recently responded to a fan on Reddit and explained how champions are pitched. In this comment, he mentioned how the Ink Mage was originally pitched by Jared Rosen former Riot Carnival Knights. Jared was one of the writers responsible for the current concept of demons and their lore in the world of Runeterra. He worked on the Fiddlesticks rework, on Spirit Blossom, on Cam4 and also on Nila. The narrative teams clearly have demons in mind right now. Unfortunately, most demon-related champions are either already in the game or are Ionian, so I'm not sure if we'll see them this year. However, Ionia is the region with the biggest pool of champions, or the second one if you count Piltover and Zone as a single region. Ionia corresponds to almost 13% of all champions. This is why three of them are already in the game as Runeterra champions. So if Fiddlesticks was to come out in this set alongside another demon-related champion, they would probably be both Runeterra champions. But, as I said, I think we're only getting one more Runeterra champion in this set, so multiple demon-related champions seem unlikely. Though, like the Poro King, Fiddle could always release with no narrative or gameplay ties to another champion. I think Fiddle has a chance to come out in this set, but I can also see Riot saving all the demon-related champions for next year. As I mentioned, Riot has been working a lot on Ishtal, but we've already gotten two Ishtal champions, and I have a feeling we won't see more until next year. Part of Ishtal's current narrative involves its conflict with Piltover, and the retcon of the Bracken and Extech, which means that the backstory of Camille and her family could be slightly altered. So perhaps next year we'll see both Skarner and Camille joining the game. Last year, Riot released a couple stories all somewhat related to the Void. You can check my video to learn more about that. 
they also released Belveth, Cassidine and Kaisa, each for a separate game. Belveth's narrative is present in Kaisa's cards, even if the cards don't match the story at all. Cassidine's splash was updated and now includes Belveth's remora. We might see a continuation of this narrative in this year's set. We saw Belveth interacting with Velkos and Malzahar in her teasers, and I think that's a good example of a trio for an expansion. A keyword called Riftwalk was leaked a long time ago, so instead we might finally see Cassidine joining LOR. Though I'm also not too confident we'll see any Void Champions in this expansion, unless... The artwork and flavor of the Mage Seeker Jr. directly tie it to one of the notes found in the Mage Seeker game. In fact, multiple notes in that game mention LOR followers, so the narrative teams definitely had their fun. The design of the Mage Seeker Jr. was also present in one of Six More Vodka's concept art from 2019. As I said, Silas, the Mage Seeker, and some of the Masias cards were all worked on around the same time. The ending of the Mage Seeker directly leads into the Shackles of Belief and the Warrior cinematic, where Silas joins forces with the Winter's Claw. The narrative of Silence of the Damned, the Voice on the Hearth and Dead of Winter has so far culminated in the Call cinematic and has not yet concluded. This narrative has Sejuani and the Winter's Claw trying to retrieve Orn's Cauldron which was stolen by Volibear's followers, the Ursine. So, with these two champions tied to the Freljord, and more specifically to the Winter's Claw, perhaps we'll see an expansion with Silas and Volibear. Having the Poro King as the third Freljord related champion would have been perfect, but sadly that wasn't the case. There are two other champions born in Freljord that are not currently associated with the region, but their narratives are not really tied to Volibear or Silas, though one of them does fit the themes of the last expansion quite well. Since only two champions from Heart of the Huntress were tied together narrative-wise, it's possible that we'll see more of these pairs instead of trios, so maybe not having a third failure related champion isn't an issue. Since World Walker, we've gotten five Mage Seeker related cards, as well as Champion Strength, which seems to be at least based on the Warrior cinematic. In the same way that Nidalee's followers are actually her enemies, so could Silas' followers be Mage Seekers, unless Riot is actually teasing a new Mage Seeker exclusive champion, in which case props to them for doing it before League. Sadly, the only lore we get now is either from a lore expansion, a League champion or the Riot Forge game, so making predictions based on the lore is quite challenging. If I'm missing anything, please let me know. Now, here are my final predictions. For Targon, I'm confident that we'll get a new exclusive champion. Who this will be, I'm not so sure, but I'll stick with TRD for now. For PNZ, I'm leaning toward Warwick. Camille is a good candidate, because she and Samira share the same voice actress, but I think they are probably working on her right now, at least in terms of narrative. Warwick, on the other hand, has much more going for him, and, just like Camille, he shares voice actors with a recently released champion, Ryze. For Freljord, I'm torn between Nunu and Willem and Volibear. There is not much evidence for either of them, so I'll put them both here for now. For the Shadow Isles, there is also not much evidence for either of the two champions left or an exclusive champion. I'll stick with Kartus for now because of the leaked keyword, though I think it also fits Ledrus quite well. For the Masia, I'm confident it will be Silas. I think he's the most likely out of the four champions and I'm not expecting an exclusive Damasian champion so soon. But they made an exclusive Yordle when there were still four left so it's not impossible. For Bandle City, I'm sticking with Corky, solely because out of the four remaining Yordles, he is the only one I can see either being a solo Bandle City champion or a Bandle City Bilgewater champion. And finally, Rune Terra. Riot has worked on Darkin, Demons, Ishtal and The Void recently, so this is very hard to guess, but I'll go with Fiddlesticks for now. And this concludes my theories for the next Legends of Runeterra champions. Keep in mind that these are just theories, and they could all very well be wrong. But now I want to ask you, what are your theories for the next champions? I'd love to make a video discussing your ideas, so please leave them in the comments below or at me on Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.